Yo, what's going on, people? It's Jamal Edwards, SBTV. Obviously, I upload a lot of music, but at the end of the day, SBTV is a business, and if I can sort of help inform my audience, then we're all good. Um, right now, we're on the way to Microsoft's Future Decoded event. Um, I'm going to be hearing about how the future of business is going to be shaped and enhanced by technology. I'm very much looking forward to it. There's going to be loads of speakers that are going to be very well known in their field. Obviously, I started SPTV when I was 15 using YouTube to upload my videos. But even though I was a kid from Acton, it had a global reach straight away. So that's one of the ways that tech has enhanced my business. And I'm looking forward to seeing how tech can enhance everyone else's business. All right, so right now we've just landed. We're gonna go and see who's speaking. Go and get our passes from upstairs, let's go. So we are catching up with Martin Sowell, who is the CEO of the world's leading and largest advertising and marketing company in the world. I know it sounds pretty like mad, but it is insane. You learn more uh, about yourself. Other people learn more about you in bad times rather than good times. It's really how you handle the bad times. You have to be very persistent. You have to be speedy, particularly in today's environment, pursuing the strategy that you had, the vision that you had, and implementing it as effectively as possible. Obviously, working hard to get it done is critically important. Also, there's tremendous volatility, how long people last in positions. The average life of a CEO is about five years in America. CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, two years. CFO, three years. You know, it's like being a politician. If you have only four or five years as a president or a prime minister, you have a very limited horizon, and what you tend to do is not make great policy changes or make great leaps forwards because you're, you're worried about being kicked out. I just caught up with Sir and Martin Sowell and one of the main things that sort of stuck with me through his speech and also talking to him just now was about taking risks. I remember I've taken a load of risks in terms of film and artists, jumping in lifts when I shouldn't be supposed to, taking risks even with employing certain people, taking risks branching out of grime music and film and acoustic music. And one of the things that he said to me was that CEOs, CFOs and CMOs have a lifespan of one to five years. A load of them are adverse to taking risks. And I think if you're taking risks to make sure that you're thinking through where actually is the risk and what can you learn from taking a risk. What does it mean when everyone can contact everyone all the time? Another consciousness that isn't ours, that's not like of you, of me, you know, it's like it sort of surrounds the world. It's, it, it means something really big, but I'm not sure what it means. It means a completely different way, I think, of behaving as humans. But, you know, if you're out of the loop, literally if you're out of the loop, you know, what happens to you? How do you connect with the real world? It bears thinking about it. We're not thinking about it enough. What does it mean? There, new politics will come out of that. It has to come out of it. One of the interesting things that he was saying was about how disconnected South Africa is, well, Africa in general. Seven out of 10 of the fastest growing economies are also in Africa. Shows much support to Africa and other countries as well. It's not just Africa, it might be in the Middle East or Asia or something, but like try and make it much more of a connected globe. I think the way that we converse has definitely changed. And I think in some terms, technology is a negative disruption because people nowadays will tweet you, but they won't say hello to you. Like, I'll be on the road and I speak to this person on Twitter all the time. But that conversation is broken because they won't come up to me and say it. They'll just say, oh, I saw you earlier. I was like, why didn't you come and say hello? And that's the negative disruption of technology, I think. What I find interesting about this one is because it was more in line with what I do. So one thing she was saying is natured, a natured entrepreneur is an entrepreneur that starts something from scratch and nurtured is where they take something and make it better. I think I'm sort of in the middle. Even though when I started SBTV it was a nature thing and I started it because I didn't feel that what I was watching was being represented on mainstream media. So it was quite interesting about how she sort of put it into two categories. Profit is not at the forefront of 
a natured or nurtured entrepreneur. I'm just leaning on my story. It was passion that what got me started and profit came later. The natured entrepreneur is sometimes prone to more failure than a nurtured entrepreneur because they don't know how to delegate tasks. That resonates with me so much because when I first started SBTV as a natured entrepreneur, I didn't know how to let other people film for SBTV. I wanted to film everything. Personally, I didn't have enough hours in the day to do it. I totally got what she was talking about. The technology exists for one primary reason. It is to help human potential. To me, it's about being able to empower every individual and every organization to do more and achieve more, and perhaps more the achievement. Uh, because it's not just about doing things, but it's about being able to have that fulfillment and achievement in life. So social responsibility is obviously a big thing to want to improve the lives of others. And I think that's a massive social responsibility. Consumers, people that work for you, it's very important. For most of the people that have been on stage this morning, I think definitely what they're doing is passionate. So they don't look at it as work. They just look at it as they have to wake up in the morning, go to bed at night, and whatever they get done in that space of time is what they wanted to do. So that's like, I think, the perfect combination. But when I speak to Bob Geldof, another thing he, he sort of pulled on was that he doesn't think he's successful. To me, I think he's successful because regardless of the ups and downs that he's still has that passion to make other people's lives better. I think the most important thing that I took from this event today would be to carry on taking risks and also showing that Africa is a next place to journey out for SBTV. Obviously we went to Johannesburg and Cape Town, but just from what Bob Geldof was saying, that they're potentially going to be the next sort of economy to rise up. Going to South Africa and building SBTV or finding the equivalent of Jamal Edwards there is a very interesting thing for me to do as well. I hope you enjoyed the event today. Got an exclusive insight into Microsoft's future decoded event at XO London. Hope you learned a little bit, whether it's a nature entrepreneur, a nurtured entrepreneur, taking risks, everything. So, peace. Thank you for watching.